are here at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Conference, and I am excited about because I just got this book put in my hands. I didn't know. I'm a little mad he didn't tell me. But this is the transatlantic slave trade overcoming the 500-year legacy, and its authors, the legendary, the awesome Dr. Benjamin Chavis, who is also president of NNPA. We've also got Stacey M. Brown, amazing journalist, and the foreword was written by Chuck D. All right. Dr. Chavis. Well, Sister Evan, you get the first copy. I, I'm, I, when I saw you, I was like, you're not going to just walk past me with this, <laughs> with this book. Let me just tell you first, Thank you for the work that you've done. Thank you. Even in keeping, helping to keep black media alive. It yeah. is so important in this day and age where we can see our narrative being stolen. Exactly. Well, that's why, you know, I'm a longtime supporter of AURN. And um, when I heard you, the White House correspondent, I said, uh-oh, <laughs> got the greatest person on there. And so, no. but you know, um, the point you make about black media. Yeah. Black owned media. Yes. Because, yes. you know, there's a difference between media that's targeted and media that's owned. Black owned media definitely uh, should be supported, uh, should be uh, underwritten, particularly in this time in American history. Because, uh, I'm going to be very honest with you, Evan. The mainstream media is failing, not just black America, but all of America. Talk about that, because I don't yeah. think people really understand how. Yeah. Uh, mainstream because they allow uh, interviews with no fact checking. They allow people to just lie, 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 and never be challenged. Right. So that's not what journalism is about. Right. Journalism is about that search for truth, and that's why I'm so proud of the black-owned media and the black-owned press. You know, this year, Ebony, is the 197th year of the black press of America. Mm -hmm. So for 197 years, we've been on the front line of not only reporting the news, but being an advocate for freedom, justice, equality, and equity. And there's another thing about the mainstream media today. Uh, they always go uh, for the negative, you know, particularly when it comes to our community. There are so many good news stories in our community, so many striving for excellence. Yeah. Even, and that's why I'm so proud of um, Vice President Kamala Harris. Sister is killing it. Sister is taking it down. You know, she's, she's coming through knocking she's and taking names. She's brilliant, she's experienced, and she ain't afraid. So that's the main thing. Uh, Donald Trump thought he was going to, like, scare her into a corner. She flipped that script. Ooh, he landed no punches. Absolutely. Not one, not one. So let me tell you about the transatlantic yes. slave trade. Stacey Brown and I took us three years to write this book. Mm. Our concern was, again, mainstream publishing treated the, tre still treats the transatlantic slave trade like it's some momentary incident in human history that Europeans and Americans have really apologized for, not true. Right. Because of the transatlantic slave trade, you have the wealth of Europe today. Because of the transatlantic slave trade, you have the wealth in America today. Uh, the wealth in the so-called West came from the enslavement of African people. Another reason why we wrote this book, we thought we needed to quantify what really happened. Yeah, the quantification of our yes. suffering, you know, so people don't be taking it lightly. The United Nations, they did some research. They came up with 12 million people that were killed or suffered in the trailer. Our research shows, no, it was 60 million. And we document that in the book. Wow. 60 million Africans were brutally, now they, the 60 million died. They never got to America. Right. Mm. So, uh, you know, and I think that if people of African descent really knew what we went through as a people, uh, we wouldn't have all this, what I would call diversionary foolishness. You know, uh, people that don't know their history is a people that will permit the tragedies of history to be repeated. The sad thing is we're living at a time when we're seeing the banning of books. We're seeing the fight just to have black studies in our classrooms, even on the collegiate level. And so there's this push. It is almost like I'm, I'm just even looking at the comment on the back yes. by Chuck D. And it says this book is a wake up call, a demand for awareness and a call to action. What is the action? That the call to want? action is first, let's get the facts out. That's why we're making history. This is the first public interview about the transatlantic slave trade overcoming 500 years of legacy. I'm doing it with you. So I'm making history today with AURN. 
and and the call to action is is for three things. One, we need to pass this on to our children. Two, our academic institutions, the HBCUs, Ooh. needs to focus on this. And then three, our public policy makers. Yes. You know, the Congressional Black Caucus. We're here, uh, annual legislative week of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And I'm saying that we need to grab hold of this moment in history right. from a public policy perspective because the suffering and the lack of equity, the injustices that come to our people primarily today is because of bad public policy. Absolutely, that we're still seeing. And that's before right. you go, you know. And that's why the Supreme Court is trying to dismantle voting rights, the, courts the rights are of women, state. all this stuff is. At a time when we still have living descendants of the Tulsa massacre. Exactly. At the same, At same time, time, that's right. They are still and, here. And, but you have these deniers that the Tulsa massacre ever happened. Right. You have these deniers. Uh, the governor of Florida is trying to say, oh, slavery uh, empowered black people. It was good for black people. They learned how to be carpenters. Right. Which is an absolute lie because one of the things that happened as a result of the enslavement of African people, they were the skilled artisans. They were the ones that built up Florida. They are right. the ones that built up Washington. Right. You know, and so we, we were craftsmen before the slave period. And we brought that tradition here. So a lot of things... You know, I think we have to go back and encourage our young people like STEM, science, technology, edu um, elect uh, engineering, and mathematics. Uh -huh. uh, so science field, and one of the things that we see in the book is that we need a redeployment in all these disciplines. Absolutely. You know, and get encourage our young people to strive for excellence. So while on one hand the book deals with the tragedy, we deliberately said overcoming this legacy, not just mm -hmm being bewildered by it. Right. Over, if we have to we overcome, overcome it. I remember, uh, you know, I work with Dr. King, who's the youngest on his staff. We used to sing, We Shall Overcome, at the time, we, we, we were not overcoming, but we sang that song right. anyway, because you know a better day was coming. Mm. If Dr. King was here today, he would say, oh, wow, I'm glad we kept singing that song, We Shall Overcome. Mm, I love it. Dr. Chavis, it's an honor to have you on our platform. Thank Just you. the living legacy that you have and the fact that you keep pushing, that you're still in these streets Absolutely. when you don't have to. I want to encourage everyone to run out and to support and to get this right. book. Right, they can go to Amazon.com, any of the places where they buy books. It's available. Make sure you do that. Dr. Chavis, thank you. I look forward to snatching you up again and having you back on AUR. Oh, absolutely. Thank, thank you so you. much. God bless.